by boys and girls. As I said, we have a special guest here, okay? He's come all the way from Manchester, okay? I used to coach this young man just over the road, Neutral's um, Community Centre, okay? This lad, when I first met him, he was a quiet lad. He used to come with his mum every Saturday. I was at college in my first year, okay? And he listened, okay? And I always told him, sky's the limit for him. Well, actually, sky's the view for him. And he's traveled the world. He's been to America. He played all over Europe, all right? Now he's got his own business, multiple businesses he has. He has fashion, he does modeling. And now, what's happening? Someone put their hand up. What's happening in the summer in Birmingham? What? <coughs> Bit louder. What did you say, Mikhail? Right, the Commonwealth Games. And for the basketball, this young man is the face of um, Great Britain basketball team. So if you see the advert, we'll play the advert for you later on. He's the face. So he's a local Birmingham um, young man. So it shows to all of you boys and girls, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want. So without any further ado, put your hands together for Kofi Joseph. where I'm from, um, my journey, things that I've been through, mental health, stuff like that. Um, funnily enough, uh, G was talking about how I was playing basketball in neutrals. At that time, I used to live in Handsworth, and if you guys know, it's not really a smartest thing to do. So, when I first started playing basketball, I was in primary school, like some of you guys. Um, I used to get in trouble. I used to not be bad, but I was like naughty, I used to get in trouble, a little bit, be cheeky, run my mouth, all of that. And I used to get kicked out of class a lot. And then I came across my mentor, Mr. Thompson. He was like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, played basketball. At that time, I didn't play basketball. He gave me a ball, and I was like, what do you want me to do with this? And I was about to toe poke it straight over the fence. And after that day, he said to me, throw the ball, my first shot ever, just went in. This was over at St. Francis Primary School. Miss Kareen over there, she was one of my classmates back in the day. Crazy, crazy. Mm, no one well, well, no one well. well. Um, and from that day on, I had something in my life for the first time that kind of curbed my behavior. I used to stop running my mouth, I used to stop being cheeky to teachers, I used to stop climbing over the fence at lunchtime. I had some I had something finally that I could put all my focus into. Um, and then from there I found out about America, found out about the NBA, stuff like that. And over in the UK we didn't really back in the day obviously you guys are all young, I'm kinda of old now. But back in the day we didn't have YouTube, we had the TVs with the with the back on it, we had, you know what I mean? We had a mouse, it was, it was just wild. Um, and then yeah, I found out about America, and from then, I just started working towards that, that dream. My idea was, if I can be the best player in my school, then the best player in my area, and the best player in my city, then my country, I brought down all the steps, and then I thought sky was the limit. At that time. So, year 11, can you please report to reception? Any year 11? So, year 11, can you please report to reception? Any year 11, isn't it? Go to reception. <laughs> um, yeah, so then I found my first club, City of Birmingham, which was over there in Neutrals. At that time, I lived in Handsworth. So if you guys know anything about like the number 7 bus, the number 11 bus, 70s, all of that, meeting in town, Adams, all of that, if you guys know what it was like growing up, it was mad. So for me to have my first ever team and place that I found refuge all the way in Neutrals, it was crazy for me. I was having to get the bus, I was at basketball practice, guys were coming to practice trying to get us, all that type of stuff just because I lived in B21. I wasn't involved in no gang stuff, I just wanted to hoot, all of that. So I can understand how hard growing up in Birmingham now can be for some of you guys, do you know what I mean? 
some of the older generation actually don't get it, but I've lived it. And now I know the city can be even crazier for some of you. So I carried on working, carried on working, I'm catching a bus, I'm skanking taxis, I'm doing all sorts, just so I can go basketball, just so I can do what I need to do, because in my head, I just need to get to America. At that time, I didn't really have that many people older than me that were in America, so I didn't really have no one to talk to about it. I was just like, boom, I'm going to the States. I'm reading magazines, I'm doing all of that. Eventually, I got a scholarship to high school, so I moved to America when I was 17. Um, that was hard. Like, you listen to a lot of athletes, they'll come and they'll talk to you guys and they'll make everything seem like everything was cushy, everything was perfect, it was easy, but it doesn't go like that, rarely. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to be a big fish in a small pond, aka if you're the best player in the city, but you make that jump to the next level, you're gonna be a small fish, do you know what I mean? Like it just it just comes with it. And for me, when I got to America, I wasn't living in Hansworth, I wasn't living in Aston anymore, I wasn't doing any of that. Um, and that was really tough for me. Just before I moved to America, my mum moved from Hansworth to Aston, and I was still going to school, at Hollyhead School on Soho Road in Hansworth. So I was having to go from Aston to Hansworth, Hansworth to Neutrals, Neutrals back to Aston and all in my school uniform, so the amount of, yo, who's that? Yo, who's my man? What's he doing? Blah, 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 get my basketball trying to take it off me, all that. It was just crazy. So I couldn't wait to get to America because I knew this was gonna be the one thing that could possibly change my life. Um, I got to America and it wasn't like what you guys saw on like TV. Do you know what I mean? I was in the hood, I was, now I'm not one of the best players on the team. So going from being the best player to a middle of the pack player when I've only got a year to try and show what I can do was crazy. The food was different. Americans talking that funky accent, you know what I mean? We're talking like I'm from I'm from ends, do you know what I mean? And they're like, what, what? It was just a headache. You got a six hour, seven hour time difference. You're basically by yourself. So that can affect your mental health. So any of you guys that are trying to do anything with your lives you need to understand that your mental health is always going to be affected, but you need to have the right kind of tools and the right kind of mindset to understand that. Yeah, things aren't always going to be easy, but if you have the right mindset and know where you want to go, then you've got a why when you're going through stuff, do you know what I mean? So I did that year in America, high school, then I got a scholarship to university. Um, and I was at university for four and a half years in the States, which was a crazy ride. I've had two hip surgeries, I've broken my hip twice. I was supposed to have a third one, I got told by a doctor <coughs> three months before turning professional that I needed to have a third one, a hip replacement, and to quit playing. It was like, don't touch your basketball again. If you ever want to be able to bend down and pick up your kids and play with them, don't touch your ball again. Now, at that age, I'm, I think I'm like 24, 25 now. I've been playing basketball since I was 10. So for 15 years, I've been grafting my, nah, but I've been grafting my butt off to, to do this one thing that I'm three months away from. Do you know what I mean? Like, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the flying to America. My birthday is in September. I leave to go to America in August every single year. So that means I'm not turning up with my friends, I'm not turning up with my family, I'm not doing none of that. Christmas, New Year's, I'm in America, I'm by myself. Do you know what I mean? I've sacrificed all of that so I can be a professional basketball player. I've had that dream so since I was 10. Three months away. I've gone through the crazy surgeries of not being able to walk, um, on crutches, moving my dinner plate with one of my crutches, I'm falling asleep in classrooms because I'm on pills, because my hip's crazy, I can't bend down, all of that, and I'm three months away. Doctor gives me the news. So at this point, I'm kind of in a, a dilemma, do you know what I mean? I'm like 24, 25, what do I actually do? So I sat there and I was ready to cry, to be honest, because everything I'd put my identity in 
literally someone else has taken away from me. I've done literally everything someone's told me to do. And it's just the cards I was dealt. So I had a decision to make. The doctor said, get the first surgery, enjoy your kids one day. But at that point, I couldn't see it. I had this vision of what I wanted to be and I had to just risk it. Right after that, I signed my first ever professional contract in Germany, probably like four or five months later, on my birthday, which is quite crazy. Um, now, I was hesitant about that because in the back of my mind, I've got a guy saying to me, yo, your hip's done, it's finished. All it takes is one slip. You've ruined your hip again. You're not going to be able to walk. You might be in a wheelchair, blah, blah, blah. So I'm thinking, I can't really go into my professional career with the right mindset. And that right there was probably, probably one of the hardest times of my life. Because remember, I'm in Germany now. No one speaks English. The food's wild. I'm Jamaican. There's no Jamaican food in Germany like that. Do you know what I mean? So I'm also having to adjust to the playing, the, the lifestyle, the this, the that, the other. It was, it was insane, but everything comes back to mindset. If you, if, you, if you stop letting your brain run all over the place and you just catch yourself, center yourself, and think about what you're doing, why you're doing it, then the hard days will be a lot better to swallow. After that, I, um, I finished the season. It was an up and down season in Germany. And then right after that, I got called up to the Great Britain senior team. Now, with Great Britain, you're with some of the best athletes in the world, you're playing against the best athletes in the world. I'd always wanted to represent my country. I started playing basketball at 10. That was one of my dreams. And now to finally make the team at 25 years old was unbelievable. But that was it. The year after that, I got called up to the England team. Now, when I was 14, 15 years old, I was like some of you guys. I can already tell some of you are cheeky. I already know. I got kicked off the England team when I was 15. I got told I'd never ever make the England team again. Weren't good enough. I was too small. I was too skinny. I was this, I was that. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, cool. Then the year after, I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm just gonna have a sick year and then I'm gonna make it the year after, no problem. I made the England Commonwealth team at 27 years old. So it took me 12 years of non-stop grind to make it. Now, the problem with a lot of athletes and people in general, when they have goals, is they've got a time limit on it. You technically can't fail if you don't stop. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it took me 12 years of non-stop crying, one day I'm gonna make it, one day I'm gonna make it. And when you focus on the right steps and doing what you're supposed to do, then everything takes care of itself. Do you know what I mean? After I went to Australia with the Commonwealth team, um, it was a crazy experience. I've never represented my country like that before. They flew us all the way over to Australia, the Gold Coast. It was like, it was insane. It was like TMZ, like you've got cameras in your face everywhere. You've got media, you've got people on the street trying to stop you, photographs, this, that, and the other. It was just absolutely insane. So if any of you guys ever want to represent your country on that level, definitely go for it because it's a multi-sport event. It's like the Olympics. There's nothing else quite like it, do you know what I mean? So make sure when the Commonwealth Games are here, that you go check it out because you might see Usain Bolt in town just just chilling like we was out and about and you can go up to these athletes, you can talk to them, you can do all sorts and I know for you guys, I might be an inspiration to some of you guys but seeing some of them athletes just rocking around might change your life, do you know what I mean? Um, I remember seeing some of the athletes in the village that I've looked up to, I'm at breakfast I'm like, yo, there's Usain Bolt, but at this time now, I need to start thinking like a fan. I'm an athlete, do you know what I mean? Um, and it's a crazy experience to be on that level. So, years went by after the Commonwealth Games, and I decided, mm, basketball's fun and all. I've been doing it 20 years, and I've technically done everything I wanted to do. I've 
played in Germany, Spain, Switzerland, Iceland, Sweden, USA. I've been all over the world, I've done everything I wanted to do and I felt like it was time now for me to go a new path. Now, a lot of people will identify you by whatever you've been known to be. So if some of you are footballers and always been footballers and then you decide that you want to be something else, people are going to kind of give you a little bit of what, you've always played football, I only know you as this. Don't let them deter you from whatever you want to do. I'm now a model, internationally published, I work in Germany, I work in Milan, Paris, um, Mercedes commercials, this, that, I do everything modeling wise. Now, if I would have listened to the people at first when I said, I'm not hooping anymore, I'm playing, but I'm, I want to take pictures, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what? Yo, man, the thing is, I heard it even from regular people, even my mum, because obviously my mum's known me as a certain person my whole life. So for her to be like, why are you not doing a basketball team no more? I still got pictures of you in the living room, like hooping, like, son, are you sure? Even like your closest people will try and help you and guide you in the nicest way, let's just say that. So I had all the backlash, I had this, I had that, and don't get twisted, I'm at the pinnacle of my career now, I'm in my prime, I'm winning, I'm killing, I'm doing X, Y, Z, and now I'm trying to tell people, yeah, 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 I'm gonna go take pictures. They're like, what? And obviously with modeling, I'm starting off at the bottom. Now, the level of resilience that you've got to have when you're trying to do something on that level is intense. You don't really have anyone else but you, really. And a lot of people won't believe in you until they see it. So technically, you've got to believe in you until they catch up. You feel me? Now, no one can say anything because you'll be driving and you'll see me on a billboard. Now it's like, I always knew you was going to do it. Yo, blah, 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 tagging me on Instagram, blah, blah, blah. But if I would listen to them to begin with, I wouldn't believe I wouldn't be in Milan Fashion Week, I wouldn't be in London Fashion Week, I wouldn't be doing high fashion, I wouldn't be doing XYZ. Do you know what I mean? So you guys have got to believe in yourself a lot more than other people. Um, basketball for me was an interesting one. It supplied a lot of joy. It supplied a lot of sadness, depression, anxiety, all sorts. When you're trying to be an athlete and be world changing, life changing, stuff like that, um, it's not a smooth ride, like at all. You might see Marcus Rashford on TV, you might see Kobe Bryant, blah, blah, blah. And obviously, all you're seeing is like a, like a, a tiny segment of our lives. You don't see the tears, you don't see us putting up shots at two in the morning. You don't see us having meetings, getting almost getting fired because we've had two bad games. No one's seeing that. So the level of stress that you can get when you're trying to reach the top is insane. So eventually I was like, I'm done with basketball. I would rather save myself than die for the game because mentally it was just killing me. And it kills so many athletes. It kills so many people. And suicide is the number one killer of men, just in general. Um, so I stepped away from the game for like two years. I was like, I need to get my head right. I want to do something that I enjoy, that makes me have fun. If that's not basketball anymore, then that's all right. Do you know what I mean? So I left the game and it was wild. I didn't know who I was because at that time, for like 20 years, it was Kofi, the basketball player. Like that's literally like how people knew me. Even Korean knows. I don't know what you like call her, but to me it's Korean, do you know what I mean? You just miss. She knows, she'd see me everywhere, I've got a basketball with me. I'm not even near a basketball court, I'm just boom, 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 through the school, getting it confisc confiscated off me. I'm sneaking in the other rooms, getting another one, bouncing around the hallways, doing a ball that, like that was my identity, like literally. Then as time went on, I had to literally turn my identity from Kofi the basketball player to Kofi that plays basketball. Now, that confuses a lot of people because they'll see me playing for England, they'll see me as the face of the Commonwealth Games, doing campaigns, blah, blah, blah. And I'll describe it as Kofi that plays basketball. 
but that sounds like recreational, do you know what I mean? And it's not. I just don't label myself as only that because we can be so much more. I could be an international model, I could be a businessman, I could be from the ends, I could be a professional basketball player, I could be an artist, I can be whatever. A lot of people like to limit us and put us in the box. So once I regained who I felt that I was, I decided, all right, cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna return back to basketball. And in November last year, I had a, I had a little feeling. I was like, mm, do I still wanna play? Do I wanna play professionally or do I just enjoy playing basketball? Do I wanna go to the park where I'm not preparing for anything, I can listen to music and I can just return back to how my love for the game was when I was just in the park playing, having fun. And then I started working out. I started doing one workout a day. I started watching basketball again. I started watching like some of my friends play, started scrimmaging with them, started working out with them. Everything started getting better. I started to get the competitive drive again. Because when you're trying to do anything in life, if you ain't got that burning desire from the inside, it's pointless. Because you're gonna get to a crossroad where it's push comes to shove and if you ain't intrinsically trying to do it for a reason, it's pointless because your competition are going to be doing it for the right reasons. I had that fire again. I was, I was loving it, I was loving the competition and then I decided to go down to Plymouth. Now, I had a little bit of anxiety going back down to Plymouth because I was like playing professional basketball again. The last time I was playing it was stress. I didn't want to go practice, didn't want to do this, that and the other. I hadn't played in two years. I've lost two years compared to these guys that I've been playing their whole lives. Am I going to be able to keep up? Am I going to be able to do me? Am I going to be able to kill? Well, I was working out, I was doing what I was supposed to and then I ended up scoring 50 points in my second game and now I'm leading the whole of the BBL in scoring and that's after two years not touching a ball. That's after being outspoken, people trying to tell you to be quiet. That's after being a model, doing X, Y, Z. So now, I'm proving to people that you can be an elite athlete and an elite whatever else you want to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't let these people try to tell you, trying to tell you. Don't let them try and put you into a box, because they will. So, that's all I really wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about today. Um, just a little bit of my journey, where I'm from, what I've been through, um, and uh, 